transformed entity. Oh, damn. Are you the Blade Runner now, Hollis? <laughs> I am the Blade Runner fan. You was always the Blade Runner. <laughs> 2049. I haven't seen that yet, but I've heard it's good. Yes. All yes, right. Sir. Here we go. Uh, bad publicity, special date, special time. Um, we had to make a minor modification. Uh, Hollis, you're usually up in in this window here. Um, how you liking your new home off to... Uh, off to my side here. You okay? Honestly, it's a little, it's a little gave, chilly, bro. It's like, um, remember Hollywood Squares? You got yeah. moved out of the good square, and we gave <clears> your <throat> square to our good friend of the show, Michael Boggs. Hey, hey guys. It's good to be on. Fresh, freshly revived. Yeah. Uh, yeah from a, vacation. From some downtime. Um, he's off traveling the world, getting inspiration. Got a tan. Oh, mm. I did, did it. You? I don't tan, but I would like to get there. That was one of the goals. I just burn. I'm too Irish. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And and uh, you're you're losing on your signature beanie now. I, I'm sure. I am. It's actually it's actually right here. I got it beside me. Oh, okay, I, as long I as it's put close. it on if you guys need it. It's a little warm right now, but um, if we need some. Uh, more more beanie as the as the show goes on <laughs> so, so does that mean you're not currently in minnesota right now if you're talking about how warm it is <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for like the last week and just just today it's been okay so is that 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 rare diamond in the rough it's like mm-hmm. um so there was a an article and let's let, let's let's watch how i segue this this from the, the beanie <laughs> talk um there was Whoa. an article released um, showing the prize support for Worlds. And so, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Do you have that. anything to do with that stuff? I mean, it's been T-shirts I... for the last zillion years, and all of a sudden <laughs> now it's like beanies. <laughs> well, I I don't know if it's related to me at all, but I think they just realized that it's cold in Minnesota <laughs> and Worlds yeah. is in like November, so uh, so people can well just... people can actually like use the uh, you know the the entry gifts, not not yeah, like put your T-shirt on. Yeah, you need the beanie. You definitely need it. Not that the t-shirts, the t-shirts aren't cool, but uh, I mean, we only got so much closet space, right? <laughs> and beanies are always useful. You can always, always use a good beanie. I mean, not for, as good as my. Beanie. For people like no. me up north and people in Minnesota, but I mean, uh, Hollis, Hollis doesn't even know what snow is. He saw it one time in a in a Christmas <laughs> special. What is that? What is that? Uh, is, is that the thing that was uh, causing a difficulty for Rudolph the Red Nose Man? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Some, um, some, some little sprinkling comes down where he lives, and okay. they shut the city down. <laughs> but like, but beanies do really make sense though. Like in Minnesota, like remember, if, I don't, Jameson, you remember that the first year I think we went was that you and I? Uh, yeah. Or no, you know what? I think I think it was you, me, and maybe Ricky. Like it, you were fine, but Ricky and I, our plane was our plane flight was canceled. Mm. Well, that was my second year, though, just for the oh, okay. clarification and records. Yeah, like yeah, they, I got they... I got out just before the storm. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, like I was stuck. I was stuck there, and like we really you were stuck spending... in Minneapolis. Yes, I was oh, stuck man. there for a whole day. Luckily, they were nice enough to to move our our, our plane ticket to a, another flight on the following day. Um, and if I'm gonna be honest, that was an amazing experience because I got to say at, at FFG. Um, for a whole day and i got to play basically like as a, a whole lot of board games like uh and like really silly ones like cash and guns with people like darren eskandari and some other people um just having fun like enjoying being nerds stuck in a winter wonderland for a day um it was a lot of fun it was actually hiding, awesome. hiding from the cleaning staff after hours uh was yeah because you had no place to stay it was nice. pretty bad it was pretty bad <laughs> But it, so, I mean, it was fun. <laughs> Did you get all the way to the airport before you knew your your flight was canceled? No, they okay, they luckily good. they sent us like they did everything. They called me from an automated system, sent me an email, and then left a voicemail. Okay, that's like right. they yeah, they took every to avenue to make up. to let me know. That's good. That's good. That sounds like that could be a fun time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. So, Mr. Boggs, a lot has changed in uh <laughs> what, what's the tagline the world has changed but the uh the mm. people have not yeah um no. so this world of netrunner has changed um i guess the people have too as well because alec is here um yeah but uh 
yeah, you guys are, um, you know, we've talked to Damon about the, the new Core 2 release. We've seen some spoilers for the next cycle um, to actually prove to, to all the haters that you were actually doing something. <laughs> right. I actually do work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, do. I do. Sometimes right. you can you can actually tell people that the game is continuing now. Um, yeah, that's 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 a plus. I got a lot of when we didn't mention anything at Gen Con. I got a lot of messages about that. <laughs> it's like it's it's coming. We're we're putting out stuff. Yeah, it took us a little longer than we intended. But I'm glad that that the revised core and the Katara cycle are out there now. It's pretty great to be able to have conversations about that. And you're so able to does, read your messages again. Yeah. <laughs> how does it feel to see cards that you had a, a part in making finally revealed to the world and in all of their glory oh it's weird it's terrifying but it's awesome <laughs> at the same time like it's yeah. great it's uh the reception so far from what i've seen has been good um i think it's gonna be it, it's it's gonna be really cool to just just watch that meta grow and evolve and like People, have, there are some of the cards that we that we spoiled in the article. Um, you know, people latch onto those and they're like, "Oh, this is going to be powerful for this reason," but not taking into account other things that are coming. And mm. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's going to be really cool to just see how that just just grows as a thing. Awesome! I'm excited for it. So let's. Um... Let's do a little bit of a rewind here. We can start by some of the stuff that um, was laid out. And as we've talked with Damon, you um, it was mostly packaged up before he handed the torch, which is uh, Core 2.0. Um, can you, is there anything that you can get into and say that, that you're happy or sad about some of the cards that are missed or missing, like... You know, some of the the fan favorites are obviously cut there. Uh, <laughs> is that, you know, is that better for you to work in a, a world without some of these cards now? Uh, oh yeah, for sure, definitely. It's created a lot of like really, like some of those uh, account siphon, for instance. I always love playing with account siphon, but account siphon is a grossly powerful card. It's extremely strong, especially when you could spam it with with um, same old thing and and deja vu and all that stuff. Um, San San City Grid was another one, um, but it's it's it has freed up a lot of design space. Those cards were, you know, they were staples in in most decks um, for good reason. They were you know they were consistent, they were powerful, but it did create a, a situation where like if I wanted to make, for instance, an upgrade that did anything with advancements, it was automatically either going to be compared to San San City Grid or um, and, you know, and if, if, if it was compared and it wasn't powerful enough, nobody is going to touch that new upgrade. Um, but if I push the power of it and I make it just as strong as San San City Grid, then suddenly you have two really super powerful fast advance options. Um, and having those extremely powerful cards that sort of set the power level at a certain mark, um, it, having those gone is 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 amazing. Like... And it's it, there. There, there have been so many lessons learned over the years, and and um, just so many different things that like can be explored with those mechanics that couldn't be explored before because there's uh, there's there's not really anything filling that void, and now we can fill the void with multiple things instead of just like one big powerful card. So it's been, um, yeah, it's 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 really let me kind of have a lot of freedom in in what I want to do. Nice. Anyone else there? My boy. Like, no, I mean, no, I, I, for a while I thought this was always going to be like this sort of complexity because there were some cards, you know, out of core and, and of course as the game had been out that were at a power level that would make design space really limited. Yeah. Lucas talked about this. Damon talked about this. And it's, you know, it's interesting to also hear, hear you say the same thing. I'm happy that the, the you know, the, the ultimate decision was to have some of these cards just rotate out or just yeah. be... Yeah, be removed entirely. I, I it totally was such understand. a good decision. From what I've been told, like Lucas was the one that originally came up with the concept, and then Damon took it and, and ran with it and pushed it forward. And I'm so glad they did because it's uh, it's made things way more 
way more dynamic for me. Like, it's not just one of those things where I have to say, okay, Sansan San is the mark, or Account Siphon is the mark, or Medium is the mark. Now it's like, let's explore these concepts and really delve into them and, and see where we can take them without... And But at the same time, I do, I know where not to push it to, and it's, it's great to have that, because Lucas didn't have that. Even Damon, to a certain extent, didn't necessarily have that with, with, with everything, so... It's nice that I, I now have that benchmark for what I shouldn't cross, um, and we can just kind of see all the different effects and all the different cards we can get from that. So, yeah, it's it's I'm 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 very thankful that they pushed that through. I think most players are too, from what I've seen. Yeah, it seems like the revised core set really feels like a much more stable base for the game, both from a, a top tier power level perspective, but also from kind of clearing out some of the lower power level stuff oh, in yeah. the original core set that never really saw a lot of play. And with that, you rescue a lot of really staple cards from the first two cycles that people have really latched onto as, as core to a lot of their decks that are now in the game. And that seems like it's a really great place to go from for both new players and experienced players to have these sort of standardized set of cards that everyone agrees is is really fundamental to to each faction oh yeah completely completely and i think i think damon knocked it out of the park and the cards that he chose from the spin and genesis cycles um i when i when i came in and i first saw the list and i was told how everything was put together and stuff um i you know after looking through everything, I, I couldn't have made a better list. I think he, he definitely did an astronomical job. So, um, yeah, it brought the power down, but it also brought the power up, and it stabilized things, and it's 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 nice to be able to have... The original corset was great, and, and it'll always have a special place in my heart, but, like, cards like... Uh, what was that one Whalen one? Security Subcontract, I think is what it's called. <laughs> yeah. That I, has, was that, has that ever been in any deck ever in the history of time? No. Uh, and, and there's no, not really actually, any card. No. No. <laughs> I, I actually talked about um, a long, long time ago, when I started playing Netrunner, there was someone who posted, when Netrunner DB was still in his infancy, someone posted a deck list with that card and they were like yeah everyone's gonna like talk really bad about it but it like really helped me assemble the pieces for the combo and i was like okay all right next. <laughs> like sure i <laughs> sure i guess so but like it's not necessary like yeah that was the last time i ever remember that card being notable ever i think the only time i've ever seen it, i think my friend had a deck that had uh, that ran it and basically he would use it to just do like the, he would just do an sea and then scorch kill so he would just get the money for the SEA, hit somebody with that, and then scorch. Like, I, that's nice, I guess, but it's yeah. still, I don't know. It's it's mm -hmm. it's nice that not to have to have to like not that anyone actually worried about cards like that, but to have just a more rounded card pool is pretty amazing. I think for everyone, for myself, but also for players. Mm -hmm. um, I know Alec was saying stuff before we started. Um... We used to surprise the direction of the new art, um, how we're mm. seeing seeing the world age. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was uh, that was really exciting when I that was like day one of me starting the job, and uh, and I was kind of told about the Katara cycle, the revised core, um, and sort of what all of that entailed. And like seeing the art for like Chaos Theory and Reyna and and Gabe and just like how the world has been pushed forward, I, I believe it's five years. Um, it's 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 a really cool idea. It's it's uh, I think it helps like reinforce the idea that this is a, a kind of a world. And um, it's uh, yeah yeah it's I, I think it's a really neat concept. And and all of the art for the revised core is just. <laughs> it's on a whole nother level. Like I think it's definitely some of the best art we've ever done. Like it's it's absolutely amazing. So yeah, it really looks awesome. And again, it seems like a great opportunity for you guys to standardize the look of the world because I think for some players, some pieces of art in the original core set haven't quite aged <clears throat> as well or don't necessarily jive with the current look of the game as much. And now you've got a chance, and it seems like with many of those art pieces, they're getting a fresh coat of paint or a new spin to fit within the either Matt Zellinger or Liga, you know, the, these kind of 
almost what seems like standards of the the art styles and kind of updating that look so that everything looks a little more cohesive. Oh yeah, yeah. I know that that Andrew Navarro specifically and the art director for uh, the Revised Core, Andy Christensen, they were very, very critical about um, everything in, in, involved in the Revised Core because, like, some of yeah, some some of the pieces from the original core, they're kind of not necessarily anime, but they're sort of that more cartoony style. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, that was fine. We hadn't really established the Android universe like we have now, but over the years like the art has really been pushed and and it's it's great to have a core product that reflects that um and everything that was replaced is just like <laughs> it, it's it's i keep saying it's it's astronomically good but it really is like the, the art they they did an amazing job in 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 sort of like telling new stories with old concepts it's a it's a really really cool product i'm excited for it. i can't wait for it to come out um, mm-hmm. so we've actually, so now to tie it in core two rotation, we've seen a incredible amount, obviously of, of cards drop out and cards that have been favored for a while, you know, it's like cards from the core set and stuff like that. Um, is there like, it, I don't know how to, to word this without sounding weird or to just to get a straight one word answer, but, um, is there pressure on yourself to r- not remake those cards in any way? Like, um, you know, like Sansan, San, like, um, like they'll, I don't want to say never because I, I think that, you know, especially when you say it on the internet, you're really putting yourself in a box or something to point <laughs> back. But are, are you yeah. really, do you feel like you really have to challenge yourself now to like not make a card or an asset that say works like Sansan San or, um, you know, a card that works like a count siphon or, or all of these powerful cards. Like, so we're not just seeing like, um, you know, Desperado the way that, you know, it should have been, um, you know, uh, costed or the, the way that it should have been, um, evaluated at an influence level, just reworked, you, you know? So we're not seeing like Desperado 2.0, you know, now it's, you know, five influence or something. Uh, are, yeah. are you really conscience con- conscience of that cautious of that uh yes and no well I def- i'm definitely cautious with it but it's it's one of those things things like um things like san san or account siphon or, or or desperado um those cards i feel like they have defined the factions that they're a part of um i know a lot of people have said since since the ban list came and and um you know core two was announced and rotation hit they've felt like criminal as an example has sort of lost a lot of its identity because they have lost some of their really powerful cards. And I think that uh, it's, we're sort of at this point where we kind of have to reevaluate what each faction does to a certain extent. Like their, their, their core tiers are kind of gone. A lot of those things right. have, have been torn away. And, and to interject um, there, I mean, especially the one that jumped out at me the most was um, NBN, say, for example, as the core set, mm-hmm. NBN was defined as that fast advance, right? So now you're taking, yeah. like, Astro, Astro Script is, is gone, Breaking News, Sansan, San, you know, just to, you know, to mention a couple of those tools that fueled a fast advance deck. And not just, I mean, obviously, two of those three were agendas, but... You know, if you wanted to fast advance outside, you know, you'd splash um, the, you know, the sand sand. So, yes, yeah, so you, you look at NBN and are they still going to be that fast advance faction? You know? uh, yeah, kind of like it's it's one of those things I want to I definitely want to keep those core concepts. And I feel like because we strip so many of those away, we do have to reintroduce things that might have been might be similar to things that we've seen in the past um but i think like there are ways to reincorporate those ideas without just saying here's desperado to here's santan to like there are ways to explore those concepts in a much more balanced way uh, but there are also ways to explore it in a way that like feels new even though it might technically do something similar Mm. Um, I with Katara cycle specifically, uh, 
Katara will ex- explore a few of those concepts in, in, in the cards for Criminal and NBN and other factions um, that uh, that were lost. But they kind of it kind of it, none of the nobody. I don't think anyone is going to look at any of the cards and be like, "Oh, this is this is just that card reprinted with like now it, it costs four to install instead of three. They're they're all different, but but familiar. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Um, uh, if there is one though, like um, I, I know that you know. It, people would look at it as like the easy way out or, you know, sure. just, just kind of mailing it in. But um, uh, a, a poll from from the Atom players of the game, we'll have no problem if you want to just <laughs> reprint E3 again. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I have had so many Atom players tell me. <laughs> Is so it just many. me? There's, there's actually a player around the office. That's He pretty much only plays Atom, and he tells me constantly. He's like, so uh, when are we getting E3 back? So uh, when are we going to see E3? Wow. It's uh, it's I. People seem to really, <laughs> really like, no promises, but that's mm. that is one that I've heard a lot of people say that they want. Um, mm. And it's one of those things like I want to push the design forward, but I also players. I, I I've always felt that players are good at knowing what they want. Um, and you know, if if people want to play E three and Adam, like to take that away from them for balance purposes, fine, I get it, but. To have that type of play style available, I think should at the very least be an option. So it's definitely something that I'm mindful of, and that that uh, we might see in the future. No promises, yeah. but there but could always be something. I, I can tell you that on the flip side, um, for how long I have been in the game, um, I think this is one of the things that I've been excited about rotation and. Um, you know, the, the term crutch has been thrown out in, in, in a couple sure. of comments and things like that. But I, I knew these cards were going away. Um, I mean, we didn't know that some of them would be saved in a core set and a revamped uh, version of it. So, I mean, it, it, it's fun solving the new puzzle without some of these oh, yeah, tools, completely. right? So, I mean, I, 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 in some ways I joke, but in some ways I'm, I'm like serious because now you've made my life even more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> That's my um, job. That's my job. Oh, sorry. So uh, just I, I want to interject in here real quick. I know that we individually sort of have a plan of the questioning that we, we plan to present to Michael um, as you know as the night goes on. But um, without me even asking, without me even asking, a great deal of questions have already come up in the chat. Now, if you guys don't mind, I do plan on asking them sort of intermittently throughout the night. But to the chat, I'll say this. If you guys have questions you would like to ask Mike, um, feel free to. Like, pose those questions in the chat, and I'll, I'll copy them. I'll make sure I have them and put your name down so I can let uh, Michael know that you guys have asked this question. But I would caution you, if the question about cards that are yet to be released, like, for example, just an example, if you ask a question such as, can we expect to see XYZ type of card in the future? The problem is, is that like this is would be about a product that is yet to be released, and so obviously he can't answer this question, um, or rather, if he does answer, his question would be, "You'll have to wait and see." So instead of wasting your time and like allowing that to be a frustrating experience, I would instead ask you to maybe ask a question about a card that maybe already exists or about a strategy that already exists in the game, and anything that he happens to reveal to us. About the future, we'll just have to roll the dice on that <laughs> and hope that he lets something slip that we don't expect. Yeah, like like because we're already blowing up, you know, asking about the the Jameson ID. But I mean, hold on, <laughs> we can't talk about it. And I would just like to add on a, a, another chat disclaimer in case it comes up or in case we get criticized for it later on because they're like well you had the opportunity and nobody did anything blah 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 um certain actions happened in this game in a community um part of it not in the uh ffg design space right so we are not going to explore um those community action things with with michael we're not going to be asking him about that or his opinions and and stuff like that um that's that's obviously putting him in a position where he shouldn't be answering that kind of stuff so um i appreciate that that is uh that is not going to be happening here so some people will be disappointed because they think that because we have him in this situation that we should be bringing it up and 
Uh, people have been looking for responses from FFG, but this this isn't, you know, I don't want you guys to sit for the full, uh, you know, six and a half hour interview that we're doing here, <laughs> waiting to get to the end and realize that we didn't ask those questions. So, um, <laughs> you know, for those people that are tuning in for that, you, you might as well just, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's on South Park. You might as well just <laughs> kind or of. Or you could keep tuning in yeah. and uh, watch, you know, about other things. Yeah, we promise we'll still ask good questions, just yeah. maybe not those. <laughs> um, yeah, so keep the questions flowing in the chat. Um, another thing, too, is that, uh, I don't know, Hollis seems to preference anybody that has green text, uh, and the way to get that is to help sponsor the show if you if you click the button under the thing you're viewing. How did you know? How did you know that, that was like a <laughs> There you go. No, I mean, we don't dis- we know? don't discriminate, but... Uh, <laughs> if you- little, little sponsor perk. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you're a sponsor, I mean, there's a little bit of a prioritization. No offense to you if you're not a sponsor, but you could help yourself greatly if you were. <laughs> we would, and also, we would very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, so, nice. continue. Alec, did you have anything to, uh, that you wanted to now talk about uh, rotation-wise or... Um, well, yeah, I just wanted to make a general comment up front and, and get your take on this, Michael, because I think it's really exciting. Um, something that I've noticed in community reaction, in games online, in my own experience with the game, is that this is such an exciting time um, for trying new things and revisiting your assumptions about what should be in a deck and how do we deck build and what do we expect to see in the field. Um, and I think something that I've noticed is that it's challenged um, what people have thought of as the best decks or the best IDs and has maybe brought um, some maybe tier 1.5 or tier 2 decks kind of to the fore in a surprising way. Um, And I think there's an interesting tension there as a player of the game, and maybe you can comment on this as a designer, of like players having their favorite IDs and decks and sometimes they're great and sometimes maybe they aren't as great. Uh, and some players take that as a challenge to, oh, let's workshop this deck I love so hard that I'll get it to the top. Or others say, let's try something different for the time being because that's what the current state of the game is. Um, so I guess in general, that sort of living card game, meta game aspect has really been refreshing uh, recently. And uh, I'm wondering how, how you're feeling about that as well yeah i've uh, it's been really exciting to see um all of the uh like you said like the the tier 1.5 the tier 2 decks the decks that you normally wouldn't see though those have been kind of popular right now which is awesome because those are the decks that i've always loved playing um mm-hmm. um and it's uh yeah i've always been the type of player that like i play what i enjoy uh, for me winning is great of course, everybody likes winning, but if the process to get to that win isn't enjoyable, then I usually don't care about the win that much. Uh, but I know that other players, one of my best friends in the world, his name's Sean. I've known Sean since I was like eight years old. He's very much the opposite. Sean doesn't care how he wins. He just likes to win. That's fun to him. The the the, the actual win itself is, is important, not necessarily the process to get there. So um, it's been really cool to see that sort of both of those things are viable right now i think realistically at the end of the day any sort of tournament scene uh the latter people who you know want to win and they play they find what the top tier is that's always going to rule just because of the nature of it but uh it's it's great that you know people who like to play other weird stuff can compete like some of the I I've been playing an Ian deck. I love playing Ian. I always have like a Ian deck lying around, and it's you know not the best deck in the world, but it actually is doing okay right now. And um, and you know it's 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 nice to see that weird stuff out and about. So I mm-hmm. I hope that that continues. Um, we'll see. But it's it's been really cool to see the diversity and hear about all the diversity too. Yeah, the uncertainty is definitely breeding creativity, and yeah, that's really refreshing. Yeah, yeah, it makes makes things way more exciting. And I know that eventually somebody is going to find the best deck. They always do in every single game, but um, hopefully it takes longer than it normally does. So, <laughs> we'll uh, and once we get there, I'll just ban all those cards. So it'll be fun. <laughs> there you go. Um, That's so, a joke. That is totally. I'm not. <laughs> just ban them all. 
<laughs> so I'm actually going to jump in here real quick because a question came into the chat. And I feel like this is an appropriate time to ask the question based on what you just talked about. So um, just to get just to narrow it down, Spencer Dub Spencer Dub asked this question to you, Mike. Um, it, he said many many people feel like rotation core 2.0 and the new most wanted list have brought the game quote unquote back to basics. Do you feel similarly? And what do you consider are really the basics of Android Netrunner? Um, yeah, I do, I do feel similarly. I feel like, uh, to me, the basics of Netrunner are it, the run, the interactivity, the the economy war. And um, I, I feel like up until recently, the economy war hasn't really been there. It's uh, the runner for a while had almost infinite economy. They would always, they very easily sit on top of 15, 20 credits, if not more. Um, and when the runner can do that, it sort of it, it, it breaks the core concept of the game of like, I can install things in advance that you don't know about and you have to pick and choose when you're going to check what that is. You have to call my bluff and, and find if it's an agenda, find if it's an asset, find if it's a trap. When the runner can just run anytime they want, the game breaks down. Um, so I feel like kind of pulling back the economy a little bit on the runner side specifically um, has created this situation where it feels like net runner because it, it, it goes back to those core concepts that you had in, in, in the core set and the first few cycles where like you've only got so many credits and you have to decide when to spend them. So yeah, I, I, I definitely feel that way. I definitely feel that way. And it's, and it's awesome to see people saying that I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, um, people are feeling that way too because i think that's that's great for the game as an as an extension there um uh how much would you say you have or if you don't or if you do say like a clean slate to deal with do you feel like netrunner is now more on a level playing field that some of these you know quote unquote overpowered core set cards have been moved and um some of the elements have been saved from the first two cycles like or do you still feel that you are having to play around a couple speed bumps um and and be careful you know like i have to walk on eggshells in this when i travel down this design space because of uh you know cards a b and c right like what like we um used to have you know from your you know your predecessors where they couldn't um, explore certain things because, you know, criminal just had too much, uh, um, capabilities with, with, with the Desperado and, um, Siphon or NBN just had that fast advanced suite that was just too good until, um, it, it was, uh, you know, pulled out of the game and, and Anarch was just, you know, steamrolling everything with the style of play they brought. So yeah. do you do you feel that those things have been neutered now, and then you can go back and explore things that previously weren't, or you know, or are you still feeling handcuffed a little bit? I, I think um, I think no matter what the design is, no matter what the game is, there's always going to be um, that that idea of, of sort of walking on eggshells. If you push even one thing in, in too far of a direction, sometimes it can steamroll, or no, sorry, sometimes it can snowball um, in ways that you're not expecting. But I think the the fact that we have, we now have the restricted list and the ban list, it, um, it kind of makes that whole process way less intimidating. Because if, it, it, it shouldn't be used, the ban list, the restricted list should not be used you know, proactively or reactively, uh, unless there's like an emergency situation. Um, and it's definitely not one of those things where it's like, oh, well, I'm going to try pushing this card. Oh, it didn't work. Let's ban it type thing. But it's it's nice to have that if there's ever a problem that emerges that's that really hurts the game, that lets you mill 36 cards on like turn four, or, you know, something like that. Um, it's nice to be able to like, take that out of the of the meta and not have to worry about it um, until a solution is found at a later time. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's still there's a little bit of handcuffing, but it's it's not really that's just part of design. I think that's part of any design process and being able to have the tools that are needed to fix problems when they arise is, is definitely uh, freeing. Nice. Any extensions from that for you guys? Yeah, just as an aside, uh, I can't tell you how great it feels to finally uh, have scoring windows back. <laughs> Those are nice. They help. I, they help a lot. Honestly, I think for years I'd sort of forgotten what a scoring window feels like. And, <laughs> and now for a runner to commit to a big run, lose all their credits, and be able to score, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's what it—that's exactly what it should be. There, there should be those moments where, like, the runner messed up, and now you get to benefit from that. But that didn't really happen for the longest time, so I'm, I'm super happy that that's back in the game too. <laughs> nice. Do you, um, do you see yourself exploring now some of these forgotten IDs, or is there, is it like just safe to assume that, um. You know, not everything that comes out for this game is geared towards the competitive play style. Um, that, that's actually a really, really good question. Uh, it's 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 tricky because there are every every cycle. There's only so many cards that we can put in a cycle. We, we each cycle has 120 cards, um, and you know there are. You want to push the design forward. Uh, you typically want to explore new mechanics and new themes if you can. Um, you want to give the current IDs that you're pushing out or things within the last like cycle or two, you want to give them support uh, to sort of solidify certain play styles. Um, you want to round out any sort of like basic things that a faction might be lacking. Um, and to be able to do all that and then also support older IDs, it's, it's tricky. It's very much a balancing act. But it's one that I know a lot of people kind of want. They want to be able to use somebody like the Professor or Exile. Um, a lot of my playtesters have told me so many times that how much they want support for for Exile, just as an example. Um, so it's who, like who is I, I, you know, this game? <laughs> <laughs> only Exile supporters. The Exile <laughs> a, a questionnaire that they have to fill out. I if that's not their favorite, I kid. They can't play that. Um, but they. Um, but so so, supporting older identities is it's tricky, but it's it's definitely something that that I, I I try to do. It's I can't always necessarily fit in everything that I think people might want for certain things, um, but uh, it's definitely something that that I, I I know there's a there's a want for, um, and uh, going forward hopefully we can have more and more cards that support the the weird ones um and uh yeah so i I just feel also it's it's a probably a good time to interject with with this knock but i don't want to transition to the most wanted list yet um do you feel that this then is also a tool where you can control more of a casual to competitive right well obviously if if um you know something is really cool but it's just too strong. You can put it on the 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 removed list, you know, a lot quicker. I mean, I because I, I do want to get into, um, and I guess this is a good enough time to answer this part about it. We saw some cards that were removed that are really really new. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it you know was the decision for that. Um, how, like how did that come about? Like, can you, can you speak around that? Because usually sure, yeah. before in the past, um, you, you know, Damon has said that he didn't want to mo- put anything on the most wanted list until it was out for a set amount of time um, mm-hmm. to let people play with it. And and we don't know the restrictions behind closed doors. You know, maybe that wasn't you know all him. Maybe that was you know decisions by a panel of people to as the most wanted list grew and matured. Um, are you now in a position where if, if something comes out and say it's you know uh, close to a store championship and that card steamrolls the whole championship, you can just be like, nope, removed right now. 
Yeah, more or less. I, I think when, when Damon was putting together the original uh, Most Wanted list, uh, we as a company were a little more hesitant uh, with things like that. But I think we, we've definitely seen how much of a positive impact uh, restricting the card pool can have on the overall meta, um, how much it can actually bring players in, oddly enough. Um, and it's it's one of those things, uh, since my time you know, here, it, it seems like we've become more and more aggressive with those things, which is great. It's, it, it's, it's awesome if there is a card that steamrolls a tournament that uh, we, can, we can throw it on. But, you know, those things always, they, they do take time, usually. Um, so it's, it's one of those, like, I think Damon's, I, I still actually think the six-month rule is a solid rule, because sometimes things do come out, and the meta is one way, and then it shifts a different direction. Um, but I think for other things... Like those, the one, the Salvage Vanities Armory. Like that card, neat idea, but it, it totally worked in an unintended way. Um, and it's 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 amazing to be able to like be like, no, we're not we're not dealing with that. We're not having that because a card like that and an interaction like that can ruin everything. Um, and I know that like like everyone was kind of on edge the the community because. We were a little slower to get Netrunner news out than we, we than we wanted to be, um, and you know, uh, for that reason, I think like we it was sort of we we agreed to be a little more aggressive with some things than maybe we normally would have been, just to make sure that like the community as a whole was we really kept that like positive energy going. Essentially, we had the revised core announced, we had Katara announced, uh, we did the ban list. It was all like within a short amount of time, so. Um, to keep that positive energy, I think we, we agreed to be maybe a little more aggressive than normally and um, um, just to kind of make things more, I don't know, cohesive. I guess. Yeah, no, I, I think it was an, uh, I, I think that was very well said and a, um, a good rationale decision. Um, I mean, it, it kind of, it, it's very interesting as a player to see cards already removed like so soon, but I think it's very positive reflection to the community to show that you guys acknowledge and react and do you know like you know you are involved you are you know watching um what's going on and and to be able to react as quick as you did with with a couple of these cards i think that's very positive for the direction and the control of competitive play yeah, that, that's great, and I, I'm 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 glad that that has sort of come across like that. I, I know, like with uh, with Blue Moose specifically, that card hadn't been out for super long, and I saw that a lot of people really enjoyed that card. It's a good econ card, but it is super strong, and it's um, you know, it was it was we talked a lot about it around the office, and we decided that if we wanted to make sure that worlds this year was as healthy as possible and as fun as possible it was better just to take that out of the meta um and you know if people still want to play with it they can still play with it casually but in a tournament setting it's it's best not to have to worry about things like that 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 warp things so radically so um yeah i'm 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 really glad that there's been that positive response from the competitive players for a lot of those those cards uh Side note, tangent. Shout out to Andrew. Really appreciate the sponsor in chat there. Thanks, man. Um, hey, actually, uh, I'll, if I if yeah, I can, Hollis, you got some you got some questions popped I, up. I actually I have I have so many uh, to piggyback <laughs> off the last bit of conversation. I apologize for. Yeah, no, throw throw them in when you can. I'm doing man. I'm doing the community like con like t discussion today, yeah. and people are live. Wow. Okay, so, <laughs> um, man, hold on, man. I, I have another question I missed, and there's so many I want to ask, but I can't ask right now. Um, okay, so just, you know, discussing, uh, like, uh, competitive, the competitive game. Uh, let me go through my list of questions. So, I've asked this one. We're going to remove that one. Um, uh, sure. So, piggybacking off this, um, I think this is pretty relevant. Maui Chris asks, hey, Boggs, um, are cards designed with the theme of the cycle in mind? This kind of piggybacks off the competitive concept because I, I think that this falls in line of, Competitive versus casual. Are cards design are cards designed with the theme of the cycle in mind, or is the theme built around the card design, or is it a bit of both? It is. It's 
I, I, it's that's actually <laughs> it's a it's a tricky one to answer because I've only experienced that a couple times. But from what I've seen up until this point, we established the theme first. We established the the setting and the characters and the story and all that stuff. Um, and then once we have those sort of laid out, um, I'll kind of go to the drawing board and say, okay, we've got these characters. This character's personality is this. This is sort of the world they're in. What do they do mechanically? How do they work? Um, and so once we sort of have, once I have that laid out, it becomes kind of a process of sort of like filling in the gaps for them. Okay, we've got this new character. They can do this new thing. Uh, let's give them some cool tools that they can use. Um, or, you know, let's let's uh, give things that like sort of like bridge this character with existing cards or something to that effect. Um, but there is, there's also a little bit of, I mean, you, you do that with a lot of cards in the card pool, but there is a lot of like just sort of looking at the existing card pool, what people are playing with, kind of the older stuff, and also sort of interjecting things in there that might not always fit 100% with the theme, but might help round out play styles that are sort of underutilized or something like that. So it's it's a bit of um, it's a bit of mix of like you know mechanics attached to theme and mechanics kind of uh, you know just for fun, um, but uh, at the end of the day, like I. I definitely try very hard, and we try very hard to make sure that no matter what the mechanic is on the card, it makes sense within the context of everything. Um, and because you know, it's 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 great to have have cards that are thematically great, but also like there's mechanical ties there as well. So we definitely want to push that going forward. Um, and I, and I think it's like something we've always definitely tried to do: tie those two things together as much as possible. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I have some more piggyback questions from that. Because, <laughs> cool. again, the, the, the competitive discussion, I think a lot of people, some people have some questions I think extend to it. Um, so uh, the question I have is, um, we'll start with this one. On average, how far, uh, sorry, uh, Shang Sit asks again um, to you, Michael, about how far ahead are play testers than the public, if you were to make a guess? About how far ahead, as far as like yeah. products are concerned. Yeah, uh, the, I would say they're like more than a than a year ahead. About more than closer, more than a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that, that's. I mean, I feel like it was a pretty easy question. I have another one that that extends from that. Uh, um, Derek Billings asks: Are there extant archetypes that you want to specifically remove from tier one play, or? Are there any that you intend to maybe even be tier one that have been like luster so far? Um, I think uh, removing archetypes, the only one that I can really think of would be asset spam. But I, I actually, I love asset spam. I think I've said that before. I, I really enjoy it as a play style. It shouldn't be as dominant as it's been in the past, but if it's still tier one, that's fine. People just need tools to deal with it. Um, but it's like any any sort of thing like that. Like I want to put out the best cards that I can for each archetype. And if those cards allow our, an archetype to be tier one, awesome. If, if those archetypes still aren't competitive enough, then we can explore more options in the future. That's okay. sort of my mindset with it. I'm gonna ask you one more, just one more, and again, this this extends to competitive because of the nature Let's of the question. Here it, comes. Here it comes. Now, I know Michael, I know that you're not OP, but I felt like this was a question, and I wanted to get your perspective on it, even if someone is not that's not in the OP. Sure, group, sure. Okay. So the, the question was, um, what to you, in your opinion, what are the determining factors in deciding to have tournament players share deck lists in the top sixteen prior to games? Oh yeah, uh, that. <laughs> That one is so. Sorry, uh, repeat the question one more time. What are the determining factors in that? Yeah, yeah. What are the determining factors in deciding to have tournament players uh, share deck lists prior to games? And of course, that's only in the top sixteen. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, my, I wasn't part of that decision at all. Um, but my guess would be for to at that top <laughs> tier level of play, you want to make sure that nobody. <laughs> yeah, feel free I to hit guess, pass. 
Yeah, well, no, that, I'll, I'll try to answer it as best I can. My, my guess would be that at that top tier level of play, uh, you want to ensure as much as possible that nobody is maybe doing things that they shouldn't be doing in their deck, even though I know there are always ways to get around that. There are, are always ways to cheat. Um, but that would that would be my first guess, that, that you want to create a situation where you can kind of check each other's stuff and, and make sure that everything's basically how it's supposed to be. Um, but, again, I wasn't a part of that discussion at all, so it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's switch, let, let's switch back to the lighter questions that we are known yeah. for. Um, uh, I, I did see a question in chat because we were talking about theme and and uh, designing cards around theme and things like that. So someone asked, uh, do you think we'll ever see a step back to the old school uh, cycle days where you get the insert and it has uh, more pieces of the story uh, in? Or now if we totally move to a, a th this new... Um, you know, clamshell box where you get the, the little, just a card at the back that you scan to see the cards in the, in the, um, in the, in the pack. You know what I mean? Like this, the, the yeah. specific question is when they, when Nasir or Nasser came out, um, you know, you opened it up and you had like a piece of story about him or uh, things like that. We'll have to see with that. <laughs> hey, just, <laughs> I just, I just read the questions, just the voice of <laughs> yeah. the people. Oh, Hey, this is sorry. Uh, I, I know we're interrupting a good portion of a lot of the question we had, but people had so many questions, so many things fit in the slot. So uh, Dan Justison, I believe, uh, asked the question: Do you think the changes will the uh, Do you think the changes, and this is everything, uh, core two most wanted list um, rotation? Do you think the changes will make average decks more viable or good, or will we see new resurrected archetypes? And I think I, let me let me add a clarifying statement here based on your experience and based on feedback from your playtesters, is that the case as well? Yeah, I, I think we'll definitely see some archetypes that come back, and I think we'll definitely see some, um, some, you know, play styles and stuff that we haven't really seen much before that uh, sort of emerge. I, I, I almost guarantee with, like, with not... A lot of the previous play styles hinged on the power cards um, that have since rotated out, not having those anymore, I feel like there's a lot of potential to create like new identity or explore a lot of things that weren't really explored before because players didn't have to. They sort of knew the the, the set way to play more or less. Um, so yeah, I definitely think we might see emerging archetypes or or the return of old ones. Okay, we're gonna remove that question off. It's been. <laughs> Um, it, Hollis, was there any other about uh, rotation stuff in general or um, ab about Core 2 before we kind of leave this phase? I I have questions about the restricted list, not about Core 2, I don't think. But they're, more, I, they're, they're sort of controversial. I'm not sure if they're like an answer that Boggs could give directly by himself. Um, but I'm going to ask it because I live dangerously. You know, um, eh. Okay, so the Aber Aber Vader Q. I, honestly, I have made, I'm probably butchering this guy's screen name. Um, <laughs> he says, "Why was Film Critic placed on the restricted list when the main two cards of combats, in this case, would be Obakata and Hunter Seeker, were also restricted? Like, what was like? Could you give any insight into that reasoning?" Hey, yeah. Not... So, Film sorry. Critic, is this oh, you sorry, transitioning to to the most wanted list now, Hollis? There's nothing else for Core. When I said, is there anything for uh, rotation in Core? And you give the most wanted uh, list. Uh, let me double check. Uh, rotation in Core. No, I don't really see much about that. All right, all right. You get a pass then. Let's let's transition <laughs> to now most wanted list. This is the opening. <laughs> uh, so with Film Critic, that was uh, Film Critic shuts down PE. It shuts down Argus super hard uh those basically become blank identities when you've got film critic S film critic was super easy to splash um and it's like film critic yeah obakata is on the restricted list gfi is on the restricted list um but you still have like any of those cards that trigger off of scored or stolen things punitive you can't punitive when they're when they're film criticing um you can't do hunter seeker when they're doing their film critic um like all of those cards that hinge on the scored or stolen or the the stolen triggers 
they just become blank cards. So Film Critic is an awesome card, and it's needed in some metas, um, and it's one that, like, I, I, I definitely wouldn't ban Film Critic because I understand why it exists. It needs to exist, but um, being able to play it in pretty much any deck you want, it was just, it's, it's, I think at the time that it released, it wasn't above the power curve. I don't know. I don't, like, I remember when I first saw it, I was just like, oh, yeah, that's an interesting card. But as time has went on, like, it's it's a very very strong card that like answers a very specific problem not quite on the same level as Aaron Marone but kind of in the same way where it's like oh you have all those cards in your deck now they don't work because I have this one card so how did this come about so we were at the most wanted list 2.0 so what what drove you to restructure to take to take the um um most wanted list that we knew and then move it to this the the tier system and then now throw those out the window and <laughs> go to this whole restricted removed format i think so the i said before that we were kind of in the past we've been a little uh conservative with with um changes and uh, in as time has went on and and we've kind of gotten new direction we've decided to be a bit more aggressive um, when Damon came up with the original Most Wanted list, obviously I wasn't there for the whole process, but um, I believe for the restrictions that he was probably given, that was by far the best answer. Made the most sense, um, and it, it when it first came out, it worked relatively well. When I upped it to the tiered system, the leveled system, um, you know that was in response to a few power cards that have dropped recently in the last you know six seven eight months here or so um and that that did a good job too but at the end of the day the universal influence system while it still let people play the way they wanted to play that was actually like kind of problematic um it's you know you 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 buy into games like this you buy lcgs because you want to play and have an enjoyable experience and build the deck that you want to build. Um, but when that deck is, when that deck detracts from other players, you know, it, it, it shouldn't necessarily exist within the environment in a competitive way. So the original MWL didn't necessarily do anything to take those decks and, and kind of push them to the wayside and let other more fair decks come in uh, to their place um but so so we decided with the uh with the re- with the release of the revised core and uh the announcement of Qatar and all that other stuff there was no better time than to sort of like reboot the restricted system try something new try something that we would knew that we knew would really work in a very tangible and very uh strict way because like you know rest- restricted lists and 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 um and most wanted lists and stuff, they are there to push the game into a, a positive direction. But if they don't push hard enough, then it doesn't really matter if they exist or not. And I kind of felt as time went on that the that the the MWL 1.2 wasn't necessarily pushing hard enough. We just needed to go even harder. Was there was there always this intention to um, that the end product would be a restricted removed? Um... As far as you know, like I know you, you already said that you weren't um, there from from the beginning. But is do you feel that from your interjection into the into the netrunner world, the end goal was to get restricted, removed, and all the spaces in between was almost like you testing the water, testing reaction, um, the company itself testing the you know pushing new bounds for for organized play in the competitive play scene no actually we so the whole especially with the remove list i i think i was on podcasts months and months ago talking about how having a remove list wasn't something that we would likely do because at the time with the information that i had it wasn't something that we would likely do we i talked about it around the office um you know, it was, it was something that I mentioned to coworkers, and at first I was all on board with. People convinced me that maybe it wouldn't be the best course of action. Maybe we could try something different, like doing a, um, 
a tiered system, a level system for the MWL. I know that um, Damon had kind of like mentioned it to some people around the office before, so it was an idea that was floating around. Um, and uh, the hope was at the time that, that that system would be enough. And I think that system worked really, really well, but um, as, as things have kind of went on, we just we realized that we could do more and that we wanted to do more and that it was it was better for the environment as a whole and for the meta as a whole if we did more. So I think it was it's it's it was really a shift in perspective as we gained more information and and kind of um, kind of saw like how people were responding to things. It was you know I, I had a long discussion with Andrew Navarro about it. Um, and uh, you know he was he was very much on board. He was like, you know what, yeah, that that sounds like a great idea. Let's let's try it. Let's let's try it and and um, see if it works. Because I was convinced when I pitched it to him that it would, and uh, he trusted me enough to to sort of let me take the reins and do it. So oh, that's awesome uh, to hear that. Uh, yeah, that, that yeah. trust is already like developed between you know yourself and 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 Andrew t- to be able to. Uh, not to put it lightly, but hey, let's roll the dice on something, right? Yeah, yeah, Not, more or less. Yeah. You know, I, I think some of the biggest issues that that we have or we see from from anything in life is people not or, you know, being too scared to take the risk. Mm-hmm. And so now that you guys are out there taking risks and you, you realize that um, the community is more forgiving if, if something doesn't go as planned, that we can just adjust it. Yeah. And I think like working with Andrew, and I'm not just saying this because he's my boss, but <laughs> working with Andrew has been amazing. Like he's he's so easy to work with. He's so easy to talk to. He's always receptive to ideas, even if it's not something that is his favorite idea. Like it's 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 easy to throw things out to him. No hey, problem. I think this will work because of this. I think this will work because of this. Um, and he understands that it's it's my job and my responsibility to know what the Netrunner community wants and know what the Netrunner community needs. And so when I go to him with a problem and I say, this is, this is the problem. And I believe this is the solution. He's just like, yeah, let's, let's, let's try that. If that's what you feel we need to do, then let's do it. And that's, that's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So So. I'm not saying you in particular, but if there's anybody out there that wants to send that audio clip or this to Andrew <laughs> on behalf of Michael. This was exactly at the YouTube time of the one hour mark. So, you know, set that for the one hour mark to the one hour, one minute and 58 seconds. So there there you go. One minute and 58 seconds clip time. I'm, I'm sure. I, I won't object. I definitely won't object. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's been, but that's how, that's how everyone is. Like it's, it's, FFG is a really cool place to work because everybody's just very positive. They understand that we are, are my job's pretty cool, and 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 everybody understands that at the end of the day we're there to make products that people like and people have fun with. And if we can do something to increase the fun value of something, why not do it? Let's, well, it's let's it's also a game. The best we can. This game has laid the groundwork for for probably so many other. I mean, living card games that will follow. Um, so it has it has to be the one that that takes the risks. It, it's this is the first one to enter into the the rotation state. This yeah, is the first it's one. It's the to, vanguard. It's the pioneer. Yeah. Uh, Hollis, a lot of responsibility on that runner. Yes. <laughs> anything? Anything from yourself? Um, uh, voice voice yeah. of the people, or or you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. straight from straight from Hollis himself? Uh, I'm, I'm not. Someone asked a really good question um, from me, and I'm going to answer that probably later in later near the end. Um, we'll get to that question much later. But like, uh, I mean, just throwing out questions from the chat. All right. So, um, again, I think a lot. Some of these questions I have are going to be questions I, I pretty much kind of know. You can't really answer, Mike, and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna try to me- mess with them, and maybe you can give me more info. So, like, one person asked, uh, Andy, Andy Gott asked. As a casual player, I love playing through the campaign Terminal Directive, and I'm pretty sure that's mostly Damon's Woolhouse. Is that correct? Oh yeah, so I never, I was never a part of Terminal Directive. Okay, well then they ask from that. Um, I love the for, I um, I love the forced. I missed a word here. Something to build a deck. Uh, I love being forced to build a deck from a couple of sets and the narrative. Is it possible that we can expect more of these? 
we'll have to wait and see. Ooh, yep. Awesome. I figured, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that one. Okay. Yeah, it's a wait and see question. Um, I like this question. Mm. Boggs, do you? Um, by the way, if you guys Paul, haven't, Paul, it's one. Yeah. Why don't you just ask all seven questions in a row, and then he can just say "wait and see" at the end. <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me. Um, by the way, if you guys haven't realized, I call depending on like how comfortable I feel per second. <laughs> I call Mr. Michael Boggs either Michael, Mike, or Boggs. Like I don't <laughs> even know. Like well, I just everyone does. I'm totally fine. Um. So, uh, <laughs> Boggs, here's a question for you: Do you prefer? Ben restricted problems or to print new answers for issues in the future? Uh, in the future, if something is extremely problematic, it can be banned. Um, but I, I feel that ultimately banning is kind of a sor- short-term solution in most instances. Um, it's nice to be able to remove those things from the card pool and then have enough time to print solutions because printing solutions does take a lot of time. Mm. So, so, so once those solutions are out, there's always a possibility that remove cards could be unremoved. Ah, so there, that's where I was going to go. Once these, uh, once Aaron, Aaron Marone, you know, has served his time, you know, he's no longer, yeah. he's no longer a bad boy. <laughs> he can come out of timeout. Yeah. Once that, like once we have cards in the card pool that can take, care of, of problems like that and those are definitely problems that were around when things were being designed so mm. um, there is anyone that's bummed about specific cards on the ban list right now like or the remove list right now um, there's there's always possibility for them to come off mm. as you, time goes on and we get new information and new so things. let's let's break down the, uh, the the most wanted list starting from the runner side so you have your restricted um section um mm-hmm. any comments you can talk about that like ones that you know you felt you know was the like say like what was the last one to get added you're like uh you know struggling with the most or you know what one was the easiest one where you're like nope this one on it boom no questions uh let me actually pull it up <laughs> There's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a list um let me see here. Or what even if the, even if it's easier to do restricted and removed together, like like which ones like did you know like for sure when you when you went into um, Andrew Navarro's office and you said to him, "Hey, so I'm going to do a restricted and removed list," and he said, "Well, what do you mean? Give me an example." Like the first card out your mouth is like you're like card blah. This card has to be restricted. <laughs> Th- this card has to be removed. Oh yeah, there 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 were definitely a couple cards that. Um, so Temujin contract. Um, I actually I enjoy playing with Temujin, but just because you get a lot of money in a really short amount of time. Um, so like that was that was one of those right off the bat. I'm like, we need to remove this from the card pool because it warps the economy in such a way that that core concept of that back and forth of economy doesn't really work anymore i figured Um, i figured you'd kind of touch on that one from what you said at the beginning of our talk here where you said like getting back to the basics of the economy balance and things like that yeah yeah that was that was actually one i think when i sent the the email to andrew and talked with him in person i don't know if we actually specified any cards exactly but um that was the very first iteration that i made up of the the removed and restricted list like Cipher was definitely on there. Um, of course, Rumor Mill and, or sorry, not not Cipher. Temujin was definitely on there, but also Cipher and Rumor Mill. Um, Faust was one of those that I bounced back and forth on. Ultimately, decided to keep it on, but that's still kind of like one of those that's on the fence. Um, let's see. As far as like restricted, I know that uh, like Employee Strike was restricted pretty quickly. Um, Clone Chip was restricted almost right off the bat film critic was on there uh levy ar there actually we had like a in play testing we had a really big list uh, of cards that were potentially problematic and we kind of tested everything and saw what was needed and what wasn't um and it it sort of went right down to the wire right before we we threw it out uh deciding exactly how we should get the list so um it was it was definitely a whole process but uh yeah, there there were a few cards like Aesop's was one of those that was like, eh, but it works so well in, in Haley decks that um, we decided that it was just ultimately better to to throw on there. 
Um, on the corp side, like friends in high places, I think at the end of the day, like I just wanted to get rid of friends in high places <laughs> more than even Temujin. I wouldn't want to see that card anymore. Um, so that actually might be the reason that the, the remove list exists. <laughs> that and Temujin. If we could have just got rid of those two cards, maybe everything else would have been fine. But um, those two cards together are... The, yeah, yeah. They, I feel they, like, I feel like I'm happy to see uh, Sensei Actors Union gone too. Just, just oh for, yeah, just yeah. for the time. Honestly, I, I don't feel that it's it's a crazy card. Like if somebody could just do that action a lot quicker and not just mm-hmm. you know draw draw. Uh, oh, I'm gonna take. Okay, this one goes on the bottom. I gotta try and pick up. <laughs> I gotta try and pick up my deck. You know, without you know seeing anything, slide in there, give it a shuffle or or whatever. You know, um, it prolongs the game way too much. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad to see that to see that guy on there. Um, still dwelling on on the runner side, um, or you know, on the set in general. Were you given restrictions for the number of cards that you were, or or did it just so happen to fit into an even little, you know, display setting of, of uh, two rows of four? <laughs> <laughs> I forget how many cards did we get in total. We got uh, I, I would like bounce between like twenty six and twenty four and twenty eight. I don't know if I actually got the number. You got like eight, the whole 16, thing. Yeah, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. Comes out is that twenty seven? Am I counting that right? I might not be. My computer's like loading it slowly. I was basically Andrew told me he's like if you think it needs to be on the list. Put it on a list. Okay, like, so you, you, know, you didn't have no hard cap or nothing. No, not necessarily. I, I still like realistically, especially this this point in time is a very unique point in time for Netrunner, um, because like, you know, we there's 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 a surge of new players. There's a lot of people coming in all at once. New players, returning players, and you want to have a list that is as welcoming as possible. The old MWL wasn't necessarily it wasn't that hard to add the influence to cards and to put them into your deck but it's just extra math it's nice to have everything just printed on there that you need and not have to worry about counting other things with this list it's like oh I can't use some of these and I can only use one of these and it's done like it's a, it's a super friendly uh, list, super simple list to, to wrap your head around so um Concerning that, though, you know, you, you don't want to create a list like that and then put, like, 47 cards on there um, or something ridiculous. Yeah, they, might, so, they just might as well have rotated more, right? More or less, yeah. So And, and also with, with, with rotation on top of that as well, that's already a lot of cards, especially for, like, a returning player. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I've got all these cards and I can't use them anymore. Um, but also there's a list that says uh, there are other cards that I can't mm-hmm. use, so... If you can alleviate that as much as possible, definitely want to do it. And that was kind of my goal. Yeah. Like, make the list comprehensive, but also keep it, you know, relatively small. As so small as I possibly could. Before we transition back to, to Hollis and, and some more of the, the people's questions and stuff like that, um, I don't want to dwell too much on our conversation from Gen Con about uh, the power of my uh, Harmony MedTech deck. Um, but I noticed that now you've pretty much nerfed it putting both uh, global food and the uh the o protocol on this list um it was too dangerous it was too dangerous <laughs> i couldn't let it get out there i yeah i feel <laughs> you I feel told you. me about it i was just like yeah that's gotta that's gotta go <laughs> <laughs> listen, that's your listen mistake don't turn. tell me about it don't tell me about it yeah oh well so excited but um so but the real question that i want to touch on before we throw it like I said, to Hollis, is um, when we had Damon on, he spoke, we asked him what he felt was the most powerful card that is not being addressed, and he said self-modifying code. Um, is that one that you struggled with, or, or do you not have any issues as, as like, uh, the level of, you know, Damon does? Self-modifying, uh, self-modifying code, it's a, it's a strong card, it's a powerful card, and it definitely lets you... The fact that it lets you have any tool for pretty much any situation instantly is amazing, but I feel like it's self-modding, uh, mod- I can't say that, SMC, there we go, I'm going to go that route. Uh, SMC is, it, it helps you do really strong things, but it's not the thing that does it itself. Like, it's just pulling out strong cards. Um, of course, any tutor effect 
needs to be um, you got to be careful with it. But what SMC? It's two memory, isn't it? It's two memory, and you got to yeah. I it's a strong card. It's a strong card. I honestly I didn't have it on the list. I don't think it, at any point. Um, maybe that was like in the original massive list that we like cut down. I can't quite remember. But I, it was probably one of the first cards to come off. Um, but you know, I could may, that it actually might be a card that I've just never really noticed. To be honest, maybe he's onto something that, <laughs> that I'm not. I'll have to talk to well, him about da- it. Well, Damon always it's saw an interesting what, choice. What, it's an interesting yeah. choice. Damon always saw what others didn't. So yeah, I mean that's that's part of being a designer. Maybe I uh, I don't quite have his wisdom yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hollis, anything uh, that that you need to to throw in here? Okay, uh, I'm going to quick fire some questions. Uh, here we go. You ready? Rapid fire. Um, these two questions to me are very similar, and they're both from Spencer Dub. So I'm, I'm assuming they came from the same uh, mind space. So the first question he asked was, now that the game seems to have matured, are the general card effects or design ideas that you and the design team have designed are just too risky to print? That are That would be considered, quote unquote, playing with fire. But let me, let me add to that. Let me add to this. He also adds, Mark Rosewater has said that Magic the Gathering designers have a list of bins for each color. Things that aren't conventional, but are okay on rare occasions. And breaks, which are things that are totally not okay within that color that color pie. Do you guys have something similar to that in a and I feel like they're kind of connected, both those questions. So, the, sorry, any, any, basically, any mechanics, have you, have you designed any cards or mechanics that you feel like are definitely playing with fire? Maybe give an example. And beyond that, do you have any bins or breaks for each faction in Netrunner? Um, I'll actually I'll start with the last question first. So bins and breaks, I don't necessarily have a, a, a list written down anywhere, um, but I feel like Netrunner is. I think there are a lot of bins in Netrunner. It's hard to say where the breaks are because. Compared to Magic, Magic's been around for like, like what, 25 years or something. It's been around a really long time. They have a great understanding. They have a very, very solid understanding of like what works and what does not. With Netrunner, it's old compared to most card games, um, but there's still a lot of design space that has yet to be explored. So it's kind of hard to say like what would break the game and what wouldn't at the end of the day like you just have to sort of be mindful about the numbers on the cards and and do your best to play test all those but i guarantee at some point we're going to see another card that does something that wasn't intended um because that's just sort of the process of design that's always a possibility so um yeah it's uh it really whenever it comes to bends and breaks like the only thing that really stands out is something that violates the color pie if um if suddenly Anarch has something that can install four cards in one click, like that would be insanely powerful. But that's also like a that should be a shaper tool if that were to ever exist. Um, so like those are those are probably the most obvious examples. Um, as far as like developing something that is si- sort of like too I guess too spicy, um, that's uh, yeah. I mean like you always want to. You always want to have power cards. You always want to push the design in exciting ways. Um, but I definitely rely on my playtesters a lot. To I have amazing playtesters. If if anyone's listening, that's uh, who is one of my playtesters. Like, thank you for all the work that you do because they they really put in a lot of time and a lot of work to find things that are broken and that are like they they want to ensure as much as I do that cards are fun, but that they're not totally going to just shatter everything so um yeah we, we definitely try to come up with like really crazy cool things but at the end of the day like you want to make sure that all of those things work relative to everything else that you're not pushing it too much um i think i answered the question <laughs> sorry nice. if i got off there a little bit no I, I think your answer was actually pretty perfect um um Let's see. Questions I think you'll be able to answer that aren't going to be just like a wait and see questions. Um, one sec. 
are uh, okay. I'll, I'll just ask this: um, What sort of changes would you like to? This is this is like uh, this is insane, uh, but I love this question. Hidden asset asks, "What is an LCG to you?" And and so while I I think that answer can be kind of long. I like the second part of this question more, which is, and what sort of changes would you like to make to that model to help shape the Netrunner and bring it in line with that definition? Granted, I think it's already an LCG, but like, I kind of like just the question, what changes would you like to make to the LCG model? Like, oh, I think man. I like that question alone. Oh. Like, if you could make a change to the LCG model, what would that change be? And it can't be that the designer gets paid more. <laughs> yeah, it can't be that one. It can't be that one. You're stuck. I would, man. That's that that that's a that's a that's a really good question. Um, I would say, I, you know what? Actually, I'm I'm gonna answer the first question. What is an LCG to me? An LCG to me is a card game that lets me customize my play style to the fullest extent. Um. And so, I guess for Netrunner, I want to create situations and I want to create cards that let players play in ways that maybe they've never played before, or let players, um, you know, play in ways that they've always played before, but now it's even better and more fun. Um, because at the end of the day, like an LCG should offer a variety of ways to engage with it and make sure that all of those ways are viable and enjoyable. So, so what about, um, what about your thoughts on, um, the way that L five R is going to be handled for the cycle? Um, oh, with like six packs in six weeks. Yeah. Like, it, you know, I, I think that to me, that's an example of, of like a change to the, to the cycle or to the format, right? Do you, does that, does that kind of, when you see that, does that, get you excited or is that as a designer and as the employee on the other side does it make you scared because you're like oh crap you know how long that cycle took to release and now they just released it all in a month and a bit now i, gotta, <laughs> now I have to design the next one a lot quicker <laughs> no actually so from what i understand with the system i haven't really been a part of those conversations much but um that's it's it's we're trying new things within the lcg model um that sort of I'm actually really excited to see how that works out because it, it's not it's not that people should necessarily like you're gonna get your your cycle faster, but it doesn't necessarily mean that other cycles are gonna release quicker. Like there's still gonna be a, a certain set amount of time before the next cycle comes out. Right. You just don't have to wait X amount of time before you have all of the cards. It it's actually a great way, in my opinion, it's a great way to sort of like establish the meta and let people play with all those cards for a longer amount of time and like practice for tournaments and and not have to worry about okay i'm practicing right now with this deck for this tournament but next yeah. week another pack is coming out and that's going to totally change everything it just drops everything and i know like i've seen some comments i've heard some people where they're like oh that's way too fast like you don't have to buy everything at once you can buy it at your own pace you have time to buy it mm. um you have more more selection to see like because obviously those will be spoiled mm. in deck builders and stuff like that for people so then buy the pack you want in the order that helps your your deck exactly yeah i think it's actually i think it's better overall for the player because like they you get everything in a very short amount of time and then if you want to cherry pick you have a much easier time doing that because other people are going to go out and buy everything and, mm -hmm. and and get all the stuff at once, and then they're going to decide sort of like what is the best for this play style, what is the best for this play style, um, and it just sort of lets you grab. If you can wait just a little bit, you're going to be able to get exactly the things that you want. I, I think know it's this a really is, exciting thing. Yeah, I, I agree, and I know this is very much like an L5R centric like concept here right now because right now the the only the only game we know that's releasing that way is L5R, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm making a statement here. So it's my official online statement about it. It feels like this is part of laying the groundwork for that CCG conversation that I think everyone's scared to have. <laughs> because like if when you when you start looking at it, the the frequency of how fast those packs are gonna come out seems oddly similar to how like a, a CCG does things. You get a set, and that set's the only set you get for X amount of months, 
and then they give you another big set, and that's all you get for X amount of months, and then you get the other big set, and then when I combine that with knowing that FFG's delved into the CCG concept with Destiny, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, they're testing the waters. <laughs> they're seeing, like, they're going to see, they already know that the, the CCG thing is working. They're going to see if the big set concept is working. And if they both work, I don't see why you don't do them both. But you, you know what, though? I, I know this, you, you know, people didn't tune in to hear my opinion uh, for this show. <laughs> uh, I'm just, we're just supposed to, yeah, we're just supposed to be questioned, you know, we're just supposed to be questioners right now. But you, you know what I think is interesting is that um, I feel that, uh, you know, I've always thought since day one, and I think I said this in like, you know, Genesis cycle or spin cycle episode where I don't think I would mind a, you know, all at once, like, here's the cycle, big box, you know, here's the cycle, big box. And I don't know if, if, if maybe that would be hard to do because, you know, sometimes they're more, um, the packs are a lot more cost friendly to, to buy in, in sections rather than say a, you know, to look at a, a full cycle and say, oh, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars, but that's the same as this whole board game over here, right? So, um, and my reasoning why I think I'd like to see a whole cycle released is just mostly because that's how it's designed. Um, I know yeah, it's been, it's, I know we've seen difficulties before about releasing synergistic cards altogether. Um, you know, during spin Reina's uh, Kessia programs, you had to wait to get all of the pieces, mm -hmm. you know, like you, you're like, oh, this is so awesome. Like, like, look at this pawn is released in, in the first pack. And you're like, I can't do anything else. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, so we've seen we've seen pieces or, or you get an ID and then the console is, you know, three packs later. Right. So, um the full design isn't doesn't get flushed out until the end of the the last pack drops mm -hmm. so I, I mean i don't have a problem with it because to me even the in-betweens I, I i thought that they released them too quickly if they if they wanted to split them up it didn't give one pack enough time to flush out and people for really to like okay if if we're gonna play with this pack be it more than four weeks or like the month until that next one comes out because then a card is released there that's going to change everything that you've done like maybe some people like that but I, I i like to see the the bigger picture i like to see the design you know from a you know what do they call it the the 400 meter perspective up right oh or, yeah yeah um whatever and that is whatever that is in imperial that, for like, you guys everything is designed as a whole is is there are anytime you're designing something you're obviously going to put counterbalancing things and answers and all that stuff and things that synergize and like to have that all at once is awesome as a player like I, I understand it is a lot of cards all in a short amount of time but I think it's totally worth it and also for something like L5R um, again I haven't been a part of any of these conversations I've just sort of, sort of what I've heard but I would imagine that because that 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 game is so story driven. Um, it's it's such a deeply ingrained thing within the design and the structure of the whole game. Having everything at once really lets you tell that story. It doesn't become one of these like long drawn out things where it's like, oh, this is taking too long to get through. It's like you get all of that story all together and you can see it in its entirety. And it's it's. Mm. I don't. I don't know if we'll explore anything like that with Netrunner, but um, at the very least, I'm ex I'm I'm really excited to see how it works out yeah. five, for L5R because I think like everybody. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, I think though that that's. It, I mean, it's been a sign at FFG that that's when the game is slowly starting to die. Like you look mm -hmm. at how long Call of Cthulhu was around, and then they stopped releasing packs and just went to a big box. So I think <laughs> if we only start seeing big box, we might get scared. Um, <laughs> some some. Uh, Quick comments from from some chats that we can touch on. Uh, uh, a fun one was: uh, Do you feel that uh, Netrunner has to now regain the uh, the LCG crown and do uh, a full cycle in less time than L5R? Like, can you do you know six packs in in less than six weeks? I could do it in six days. Boom! <laughs> what, what, the, what is happening, Maui? Maui I think. Josh Rosplainer or Mario Chris said this. He was like six packs, six days. Yeah. Go. Um, the <laughs> next one you is, uh, it, I'm going to alter it a bit because someone said, do you think that there's problems with CI and stuff like that? Um, 
using you know violet level clearance and ultra uh, violet clearance um but uh you know to piggyback off that do you ever feel or was there a discussion about ids that should be either restricted or removed or was that totally yes. off limits no that was that was definitely on the table uh ci was talked about um I think I think uh, Leela was even talked about a little bit, um, and and also all the clearances were all talked about as well. Ultimately, we I decided the testers decided that um, you know other cards were more pressing, and while I didn't necessarily have any specific concrete limit for the list. Again, I did want to keep it as small as possible. So, you know, CI is powerful, um, and I expect to see it at Worlds and, and, and things. But um, I'm hoping that with enough changes and stuff, like, I, I think it's I think it's kind of in an interesting space right now. We'll kind of have to see how things balance out. But, like, you know, if, if, if something happens and Worlds is dominated by a specific deck, if one deck just comes through and blows through, whether it's CI or... or, uh, or professor which is more likely um then you know there's always the possibility that we can restrict those ids we can we can remove those ids um well it, it almost was med tech but then someone killed me. <laughs> i just um, i couldn't handle it your Jinteki deck is better than my Jinteki deck <laughs> you're giving him too much credit you don't don't do this <laughs> jameson no um so I, I had a question from um austin sutherland and uh i really like this question actually even though it's a little risky. He mm -hmm. says, about color pies, are you actively attempting to shift certain color pies? Um, the example he gave was MBN no longer being the common, having the common fast advanced tools. It used to be, they were sort of the king of that. And let me let me interject here a little bit also in addition to the question. I remember at some point, Damon, um, we, when we interviewed Damon and talked about it, he said he didn't really have a faction that he thought was necessarily, like fast advanced should be something that kind of exists across a lot of factions it wasn't just like a single faction was best at it but the the sort of issue with that is that we did have a faction that was best at it like you know like uh in, in it, whether that was the intent or not right like mbn was the effective best faction at fast events so are you trying to shift mbn in this instance out of that like concept no actually i think i i kind of agree with damon that um, while I totally, there are definitely factions that are uh, that are better at, at some archetypes than others. I think that like spreading some of those tools around is the best direction to go within reason. Obviously, you don't want every single faction to have uh, a biotic labor type thing, but I think it's kind of interesting that now like Jinteki has shipment from Tenen. And um, obviously, you've got biotic labor and other things. And like, as time goes on, we'll see other tools that sort of push that that play style. Um, but I think it's like at the end of the day, I don't think it's necessarily the I don't think it's necessarily the archetype that's important for the faction. I think most factions should be able to do most archetypes within reason. Uh, but I think it's the way they go about it that's important. So like for HB. If they want to fast advance something, they just gain clicks. That's the easiest way to do it. For NBN, if they want to fast advance something, they mess with the advancement requirement or they do something with uh, advancement tokens. Uh, what's that one uh, card that nobody ever plays that's um, it's the asset, and when your turn begins, you get to put an advancement token on a card? It tra I think it's like, um, oh, what is that in? Is it in San San? Like at the beginning of every single turn, I can't even think of the name right now. But it uh, like someone that, in chat will tell us. I know. Yeah, so that. somebody will bring it up. Please, please do. But the, the, you know that that type of thing where like um, they are they're not directly saying, oh, I can do more of this thing, but they sort of are in a very specific way. Jinteki is kind of playing with it and saying, okay, I get these advancement tokens, but it's in response to whatever the runner is doing, which has always sort of been their play style. The runner takes damage when they hit their snares. The runner does this when they hit that type of thing. Um, so, you know, Whalen should even have options like that, but in their own way. Um, same thing with like something like Glacier, like Jinteki and HB and Whalen all do Glacier really well. It's a little harder for NBN, but like everybody kind of has their own tools that makes that work and they, they just operate in their own manner. So, okay. 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I feel like NBN has lost a lot of their tools, but as time goes on, we'll move back into that. I, 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 I can definitely say that, that we'll, NBN will... I don't know if they'll necessarily be the king of fast advance that they used to be, but they're going to have tools again for it. Well, you can you can play it into that retheming that we talked about, where you know you just you know you see the runners age, right? You you know you see the you know the older Gabe. So time has passed. So obviously these corporations have to come up with uh, you know new technology, right? <laughs> it, true. it can't That's just true. be it can't just be HB that has uh, only advancing their biroids. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's that's totally true. You could always spin it one way or another. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, and that's that's definitely. If you look at the guitar cycle, that actually I think is like some of the the core concepts that are explored in there for each faction, for each corp mm-hmm. faction specifically, are very much tied to the thematic uh, elements, and the thematic elements are tied to that sort of like advance in time and and all that stuff and the like the way the world has shifted and stuff so it definitely has an effect on the design as a whole yeah and that's really awesome that you're able to pick up on the signals to segue into the uh the new cycle um (laughs) Um, because so from what we can tell about the new cycle um everything either costs zero one or two and all agendas are five three and uh that that is true um and all runner cards are atom cards oh little known (laughs) <laughs> Every single one of them, all of them. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, someone's, Adam's your one. Someone, someone, yeah, someone's dreams coming true. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of five thirty cycle. We definitely do. We're gonna see a lot more of those. Are you trying to um, uh, actively stay away from three twos? Um, kind of, kind of. It, they're not off the table, but I think historically they've been somewhat problematic and if you look at the revised core every faction's got one now yeah uh, well, there, there was so a quote like, from lucas a while ago like back when he was still you know and then the the one th- i forget what was the last one that you know some something happened with the three two and he was just like you probably won't see a, a three two for a very long time after that oh yeah 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 that's i that was something it's sort of it's kind of an unspoken rule. Like nobody has told me not to do more three twos, but when you look at just everything as a whole and kind of like how things are moving it down the road, like it it three twos aren't totally off the table, but they are. It, it would be nice to explore other things. I I, th- I think we can definitely we've definitely got a lot of design space to mm-hmm. explore other stuff before we fall back on three twos. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like giving every faction maybe a nine six. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are that's that's right. that's actually after Katara. That's all we're gonna see. Nice. Nine, nine sixes. Okay, well I'm out. Um, all all <laughs> government takeovers, man. All the time. Hey Boggs, through all What's this up? hustle and bustle of core two rotation and things like that, and the newest one list, were there any instances where you would have preferred? This is also from Austin Sutherland. Were there instances where you instances where you would have preferred? reprints of the cards that are gone. I'm going to piggyback that off another question someone asked. Uh, Joshua Swainer asked, in playtesting, has there been a notice or an issue with Agenda Flood? Now granted, understand, I don't know what's coming out. Has there been an issue with Agenda Flood with Jackson Howard being rotated out? So let me combine those two again. Um, First part of it is... Would you? Were there any cards that you would have liked to see reprinted that are basically banned or, or rotated out? And number two, has there been agenda flood as a result of Jackson being rotated out? As if you were us right now, is there an issue with it? Because uh, so you know everything. <laughs> I do. I do know everything. Um, first question: No, not really. I, I think everything that rotated out needed to go. Um, again, I think I think Damon did an amazing job with the list that he picked. Um, and he, he, he pushed out any cards that were problematic or not even necessarily problematic, but like uh, just limited design space, like really put a chokehold on it. Um, as for the second question, I, I remember Day, Damon saying that Jackson was a crutch. Um, I kind of agree with that. I, to be honest, I didn't at first. I like, came in and I was like, oh, there's no Jackson. Like, that's a super big problem. We need to have things to deal with that. But as time has went on, like, Agenda Flood 
can be problematic, and things like uh, cards like Maul or whatever can really hit the corp if they're not uh, ready for it. But um, I think like with things like uh, what's what's the card preemptive action um, and potentially other things that we'll see down the line. Like it's Jackson is not as needed as I think uh, most people thought he was. Jackson was more or less a response to noise. Um, and he just also happened to be awesome for every other situation. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things like the fact that he's gone, I understand why people are sad, but I, I, I don't think we're going to need anything like him again. I, I, I think we can explore a lot of other ways to sort of do the same thing. If, if that's a problem, if, if, okay. if, uh, agenda flood and, and getting your agendas trash and stuff, if that's a problem, we can definitely do it without falling back on Jackson. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any possible, any possible, any other questions I can ask that aren't going to be immediate. Like you can't answer right now. Um, so while you're looking, Hollis, um, yeah, do you think? Uh, how about this one? Um, so scared, excited, or nervous? Um, now that you know, you are kind of like the soul. I, I know, I know. There's a lot of moving pieces behind the scene. There's a lot of. It's not, you know, even though you are the face per se of Android Netrunner, there's a lot of. You know, you got a lot of people helping you out. But we see, you know, so Damon, uh, you know, has moved on to other things. And um, Lucas, now it was announced that he's moving on to other things. Mm-hmm. Um, so how does that, like, you know, before you had them there to kind of like yell across the office, right? Hey, uh, you, what do you think about this idea? Awesome, print it, right? <laughs> or, or, you know, you're crazy, rework that. You know, so you had like that soundboard to bounce something off of, you know? You know, how are you feeling, you know, your, your emotional level with both of those you know, previous faces, lead designers of the game, you know, now moving on and, and not having it like, like you were the sole, you know, person now you're, you're calling the shots, everything, you know, you you just, and, and that safety net, if it was, you know, if we label it that of being able to bounce off, like, you know, somebody, um, is gone. I, I'm actually really excited because there's nobody around to contest my reign just whatever i say goes I'm, I'm no it's you know having having um having damon available when i first started and uh, having lucas around the option or around the option around the office was awesome and if i had come into the job and like it was just me from the beginning that would have been that would have been pretty terrifying but i think um by this point i have what i like to think is a pretty good understanding of things and like it's it was it was sad to see Lucas go, um, and I know that everybody around the office was was sad, but it uh, it was the right move for him. He he it, that's what he wanted to do, and that's what he felt was best for his career, and that's that's awesome. I'm glad that he he has that opportunity, and I hope it really works out for him. Um, and it's one of those things too. Like I know if there's like if there's ever really an issue, like he's, he's always somebody you can discuss like sort of overarching things with. He's always like a great resource, but so is everybody else around the office. Like, even though I don't, there's not really any buddy that's necessarily still around. That was like the lead designer of Netrunner. We, there's still people like Jeremy's Wern, who was world champion and uh, just is an amazing person to bounce ideas off of. There's Matt Newman who does Arkham horror. He's a pretty avid Netrunner player. Uh, he's a great guy to talk design with. There are some other more competitive guys um, in other departments that I talk to all the time. So there, there's still a really good community around. Um, and then there's also all my playtesters, too, who have just as many years of experience with the game as as I do in most instances. So um, there's a very I have a very comprehensive network to sort of fall back on if there's any sort of problems. And then there's also all, all the other managers and then like designers that like, uh, like Nate French, Nate French is, he's done L5R. He's done, um, he worked on call of Cthulhu and conquest and Arkham and Lord of the Rings and, uh, game of Thrones and pretty much any of those big LCGs that aren't Netrunner. runner. He's worked on all those. Nate French is amazing to have around because even though he didn't necessarily work on Netrunner, like he's just like a design guru. Anytime there's a problem, you ask Nate a question, he's got the answer for you. Um, he's like an encyclopedia of knowledge. So um, there's there's so many talented people around that 
it's you know it, it was great having Lucas there, and it was it's and I, I know I can always message him or, or Damon if if there's ever an issue, but um, I've definitely got a lot of support. Yeah, you guys are still Facebook friends, right? So we're still, <laughs> <laughs> and that means we're friends in real life. Facebook friends is all that matters. Yeah. It makes, it makes it real, man. It makes it real. It makes it real. Mm. There also, was no friendship before Facebook. It just didn't exist. <laughs> Anything else from you, man, before we uh, kind of move off uh, yeah. and, and conclude this? Any any last-minute ones? or? Yeah. I got, just basically, uh, I'm going to just skip to the one that someone asked me about Keeping, it, keeping um, it short and sweet? Yeah. The, this is the question someone asked me, and I'm going to go ahead and just say this. I don't expect – in fact, I'm going to tell you, Mike, don't answer this question. But <laughs> just, just don't answer it. Just don't answer it. But uh, my question that I would ask you would be the question that um, uh, someone has already asked also. So I'm going to read their question out to you. And I'm going to – and basically just know this would be my, my question. Someone asked me, Hollis, what question would you ask Michael regarding that runner? Like that was their question to me. And I was like, okay, well, someone already has asked this question. Let me tell you what it is. Actually, here's a brief story. Never mind that. Sorry, Jameson. <laughs> so I happened to be at Gen Con this year. I decided because L5R was the new hotness, I wanted to check it out. I had never played L5R before. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put Netrunner on, on, on the back burner this, this year at Gen Con. I've, I've done Netrunner for the past three or four years. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. You know what? Everyone called me a traitor, by the way. <laughs> um, I was like, let me check out the new thing because this L5R is really cool. L5R was has... a good game, so I understand. I understand. Yeah, it, was, it had a lot of hype. I wanted to see what it was about. So I check it out. The community for that game is very positive, and they are very into that IP. Like, they are not kidding around. And I was watching everything that was happening. And uh, just to give the the sad description as a, as a Netrunner player, I was sitting waiting for my first game of, Net, of L5R ever. And it was then people walked in banging these, like, j- these drums that were, like, <laughs> Japanese drums and carrying the banners of the clans, hashtag factions, of of each of the of each of the, the seven clans and all i can think of i don't think i think was um i don't think netrunner has ever had anything this like narratively cool <laughs> like like the inserts in netrunner have always been amazing like i enjoy them i've read all the novellas i love them um rena is way more of a badass than i ever expected <laughs> um so the question someone asked that i would ask you is like when i when i had that conversation with people about it People were kind of off put by it in that They said it's amazing to see so much love towards L5R and it's the brand new thing. And uh, Netrunner still has a fan base and it doesn't have the same kind of love. So, my question to you that I don't think you can answer because this is an OP question would be um, uh, I lost the question. Basically, do you see Netrunner having here? I've lost sorry, on the, back, on the back of the LCG discussion, are there any plans to implement? OP prizes and and story impact similar to what is available in L5R. And while that's not a question that I think that you can answer, I think it's definitely an OP question. Um, it was a question I wanted to ask Andrew Navarro, and I think when we had kind of touched that, he even said if people if he if they if you guys saw there was interest for that, it would be something they would explore. Um, that would be my direct question to anyone at FFG: is that that amount of love and attention for the narrative of the game yeah. can invest people beyond just the cards that are released and it helps build that community and things like that. So I personally love that. I think it's amazing. I would love to see more of it and I hope if someone in OP heard it, that's what uh, they would explore. But that's it. That's my question to Boggs or to FFG period. That's it. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely it's it's something that I could pass along to OP. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I know a lot of a lot of people really liked the event. Um, I, I, to my knowledge, that's the first event that we've done like that. Uh, it's yeah. sort of like a big oh, yeah. type thing. Um, so I, I, I think it was sort of a, it was a bit of, um, it was definitely a, a celebration for L5R, and it was sort of like um, a, uh, a, we were sort of. You know, bringing in old players and bringing in, in in new players into this universe that's been established for years, but is sort of like um, has sort of been remade and 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 uh, retouched upon. And we wanted to like have a really exciting event. But from everything I've heard, there, there was you know a ton of positivity around it, and people really enjoyed it. And and I know that OP is very aware of that. Um, so while I can't say if we would 
ever do anything like that for Netrunner. I know 100% that almost everyone at FFG is, is, you know, very aware at how much people enjoyed that. And, and I, and I think people are open to the idea of potentially exploring that for other, other games as we go forward. I, I think to add on that, uh, again, my two cents that you can, you know, feel free to, you know, take notes and take this back to the, the lunch, the lunch <laughs> oh room tomorrow. Um, I think that what, what we enjoy about uh, certain aspects about this game for some reason is uh, is alt art and kind of side things like you know like the story stuff that that happened with um, L five R. Um, so and it's people need some kind of um, reason to extend out and and buy some of these side products, and I think that. Um, you know something that we haven't seen for a while was the draft format you used to be able to get draft packs when you originally got a you know your core set it was divided into you know three copies two copies one copy of cards so if you played in draft that first draft that came out you might have got a desperado in draft you might have got uh, another san san um so it gave you a reason to play when you moved forward into the other draft packs you kind of all you got was maybe early advanced copies of the same cards that you're going to get in the packs so i think it would have been cool at that point if we could have you know had alt arts you know so um or something like that um you know because people love their alt arts um and i think what would be cool too is uh is thematic tie-ins we just saw the arkham book i know it was mentioned by someone in chat um if you get the new arkham novella there's like alternate arts for the characters and uh, some, you know, some yeah. fun cards and stuff in there. So that's something um, that I think I would like to see co- kind of cool tucked into, you know, if, if we see more Android alt art, uh, Android novellas come out, you know, if it's say a, uh, you know, an Adam story, okay. just, just say, um, <laughs> and that, that, you the know, person and then, that asked that by the way, was no names left. I think is, is, was his nickname just to make sure you get yeah. the shout out. But, um, yeah, like, right. Like, so maybe there's like a cool, some cool alt arts, uh, for Adam in there. And then a special, you know, I would say non-competitive directive, you know, like I know it's really hard because of the living card game to be able to like, so Arkham horror is not a competitive style game per se. Um, you're not going to a, a, a tournament to win prizes. You're going for the story, for the experience. Um, and even some scenarios are set up that if you lose, the story continues on. But I don't think that some, I don't think we can release a, a competitive card in, um, you know, a side thing like a, like a book where you have to buy the book to get this competitive card. And it's just probably not really a distribution model that, that we can follow. Um, but, but I think that, uh, you know, it's something that we can look at as as extra things along the way, right? Like, not everything has to be competitive, as we've seen with Terminal Directive. The stack of of cards in there that you can't use competitively. So, you know, they. I mean, I don't know what's stopping someone from, you know, if they want to play for fun, play with some of these other cards. But um, I think that would be something cool. You know, uh, it's like I said, in the next novella, have a, a, an alternate art character or or ID based off whatever the story so should be mm. oh yeah for sure for sure i i know that like uh, uh matt newman specifically he, he he talked a lot about how he was excited for that just as a concept like oh hey you got this book you also get this card as well like this it just sort of like brings people more into the game and brings the story more into the game um and i think it's definitely something that you know i i would be happy to explore for for netrunner um, but I, I think you also have a good point. Like if it, if we put the most competitive Adam directive in the book, I could I could see where that would sort of be problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it would have to be something that's kind of kind of fun and, and and you know fits with the story and whatnot. But um, you know at the end of the day, that's that's what it's for. It's it's, it's just sort of like a fun thing that you can mm-hmm. kind of do and explore. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that'd be really cool mm-hmm. to maybe test out uh anything from yourself michael that we haven't touched on that you kind of just want to say to the people uh clear the air or get out um i no not really i mean i i I just hope that everyone's enjoying uh the meta as it is like it's it's been really exciting for me um i to you know actually see the stuff that i've worked on and how it's sort of um 
how to how, how it's kind of like changed things and how people have reacted to it. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope people are enjoying things. I hope uh, people are looking forward to the revised core and to guitar and stuff. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for for playing and for making my job the best job ever. So, so we are getting into a uh, a game space where it is going to be, you know, your influence on, on the card designs and stuff like that. So let's, uh, let's see where your headspace is at. Uh, we're going to end off with, uh, some rapid fire questions. Oh, okay. Bring them. Um, the game that you're playing right now, that is not, you know, an FFG related game, whether it be video game, board game. Uh, I have been, I, I guess the most recent game that I've been playing is the uh, new Legend of Zelda game. I said on podcast like like on January, February that I wanted to play that. Finally got to my roommate. He got a Switch and we played the crap out of that. So yeah, it's, a big it's good. It's a good one. Uh, current current TV show you're caught up in? Oh man, uh, what did I just catch up in? I feel like I just watched something. I'm terrible with TV shows. Um. What did I just finish? I think maybe the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I think that was probably the most recent one that I finished. Uh, movie of the summer for you? I'm not much of a movie. Pro- I like movies, but I never go and watch them unless somebody drags me there. I only saw a handful of movies. Maybe I like Spider-Man. I only saw like three movies. Does Beauty and the Beast count? I was actually really surprised by Beauty and the Beast. Sure. Was- hey, this is movie of the summer for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Okay. I don't know if it was spring or summer. We're going to say summer. All that right. was a good one, too. That was a really good one. <laughs> uh, song of the Summer. Song of the Summer. Anything by Mitski. She's an artist that my friend uh, showed me a while back, and she's awesome. So Hollis is, I can see his face. He's, like, Googling it right yep, now. Yep, got to Google that right now. Uh, <laughs> Look her up if you don't know. She's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. So those people that, for that answer, if you had Desperado, uh, <laughs> is, what's it, Despacito, whatever that song was, you are you are wrong. <laughs> you are out. Um, you recently spent 16 hours in Canada. Uh, how was your time there? It was great. Everyone was super friendly. There was um, what's the? There's like a booster juice. I saw one. It was like everywhere. I didn't even know what it was, but it was good. It was really good. Uh, and, and, Tim Hortons everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. It was. It was nice. It was. It was. I enjoyed Tim my 16 Hortons. hours there. It was a good time. Yeah. And, Everybody was super friendly. There. I had a long conversation with a bus driver at like two in the morning. So. Actually, speaking of food locations, you so had no from the problems F- getting in, right? It's like a club. Like I left your name on the guest list, right? You were good. <laughs> yeah, actually, they they checked. They were just like they you're like, yeah, I know Jameson. And they're like, oh, really yeah. easy. <laughs> you, you can go in the speed line. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. Hollis, what do you got? How often? Well, how often do FFG employees go to that sports bar very close to the FFG center? Is that like a common place you guys go? Are you talking about Joe Sensors? Yes. Uh, you know, actually, I haven't been there yet, and uh, but what? I've been I've been meaning to go. There's actually another one like down the street. I think it's like Lucky Thirteen. I think that's what it's called. I've been yep. to that one a couple times. That's a really good one. Uh, okay. Joe Sensors. Uh, so, um, back in the summer, like some people from the office had like a volleyball thing, and we talked about going to to that place because they have like a volleyball court right in front of it. Um, but we just ultimately went to the park and like grilled out and had like a good time. But uh, yeah, have have you been to the Joe Sensors thing? Yeah, it's like a staple now. We pretty much go every year. <laughs> I'm look, I've been, I've been meaning to go, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I need to it at some point. Um, your prediction for worlds? My prediction for worlds: um, everyone will be wearing a red beanie. Uh, <laughs> not that it's qualified. No, I think that. Um, I'm I'm hoping that Wayland wins worlds. Uh, Wayland and we're gonna say Shaper. We're gonna say it's gonna be a uh, uh, a surprise Chaos Theory deck and um, Titan Transnational. That's there actually a go. bad pick because that is actually a viable option. <laughs> <Titans>. <laughs> hey, one, one you went out on a limb on, one you took a safe one. So yeah. I mean, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Um, I got nothing else. I think, you know, that the, the wow. chat is more caught up in what is Tim Hortons, but, uh, 
Hollis, you got anything to, to end it with? Um, just a quick shout out to um, uh, the chat. Uh, you guys were really, really active tonight, and it was a lot of participation. I really appreciate it. You guys are jumping in here, asking questions, discussing you know amongst yourselves about um, the things that we were talking about. So it's really nice to see that kind of participation from you guys. Um, shout out to Alec. Unfortunately, Alec ended up having horrible, horrible internet problems. Blame Comcast or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so, unfortunately, he dropped midway through. But we, you know, a lot of love for him. He was doing a great job discussing a lot of the things we talked about tonight. Uh, props to Jameson, of course, my boy Jameson, and and the, the man himself. Uh, you know, let's all give him, a, you know, the, the golf, the golf clap uh, to Mr. Michael Boggs for taking time out of his busy day and busy night to join us and have this this conversation and discuss changes in the game, things that are coming, uh, things you would like to see, things you can't do anything about, uh, <laughs> things you can't talk about. Um, and just really just like giving us so much of your time. We really appreciate that. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's, it's always a blast to be on. And I, yeah, I actually, I want to apologize for taking so long to come on. I just want to <laughs> clarify for anyone. They asked me like weeks ago to come on and I was just busy with everything else. Oh, was, uh, yeah. Bro, don't, don't reveal your secrets. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, secrets. I was, no, I was it's, it's, say, it's good to be on Thanks here. to Hollis. Hollis is like the personnel of of, uh, of bad publicity. No. He he's the no. HR department, so he he's the one that reaches out. Like as soon as there's a change in the game, he he's like, guys, I've already messaged Boggs. He's going to know. This is, I think you were the first person to message me. This uh, is literally if you, for those of you that don't know. This is literally how fast it is. Okay, someone will like if something is leaked in Netrunner. Like if someone leaks a card. The that first person happen. I message, yeah, right, that never happens. The very first person I message immediately is Boggs, and not that's not to get anybody in trouble, but like the first thing I do is like, car got leaked, Boggs, this car got leaked. Can you talk about it? No. When can you talk about it? <laughs> and he's and if, if and usually like ninety nine percent of the time, which is like every time so far, right? Like Boggs is like, when that car actually comes out, and I'm like, perfect. See you then. And, it's like this. <laughs> and so I, I wait for the release date, and I'm like, all right, are you available on the day this came out? Like, let's do this. That's actually my method. It's the Just, safest option. Yeah. yeah. It's the easiest way to do it. Pretty much. Pretty all much. Right. <laughs> Well, thanks a bunch, man, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who tuned in for the uh, the, the full like, extravaganza here on a wonderful Tuesday slash Wednesday morning. Um, <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, thanks to everyone who catches us, supports us. Um, we will catch you next time. See you Have guys. a good night.